All right, guys, we've got the uh, NZXT Switch 810 in matte black. And I'm going to do an overview of all of the features of this case. And most of this will go for all of the colors. Pretty much the only difference is the, pa the paint color. But all the like inside features are all the same for all the different colors. I guess we'll just start off with the front and the face. Uh, and this is such a massive case it's hard to get all in camera. So... Um, all right, so up here, we've got a panel that you just push up here, and it flips open, and you've got your, you've got the ports, you've got two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, a card reader, I'm not sure if it supports SDXC or not, I've not been able to get a hold of anybody who can tell me that, for, for certain yes or no, and your, uh, your headphone and microphone port, your reset button and an LED button. I'll go over what that does when we get to the back of the case. Next we've got our four 5.25 inch bays. Oops. Wrong direction. Alright, we've got our four 5.25 inch bays. We've got the optical bay, stealth bay. What this does is when you take your optical drive and you put it in, you put this over the front, like when this slides in here, and I think the clips are closed, but when that slides in there and then you clip this face panel, it keeps the whole uh, look at the front of the case, and it passes through the button and everything, so it's kind of a stealth bay. We've got two just plain blanks. And we've got one that's kind of, it's got uh, vents in it, and that is for this, and I have to um, remove a couple screws on the inside, so once we get on the inside, I'll take those screws out, and then we'll come back to that. But what that is, is it's a hot swap hard drive cage, and that's just venting to let some air go over the hard drive. We've got... We've got our front panel right here with just a push in these two spots right here and here. It just pops open. And you see your one included 140 millimeter fan uh, with the option of adding another down here. Or they can be 120s. Either way works. But it comes with one and you can add a second here. As for this door panel, it's mostly solid but it does have this uh, little mesh piece right here which is where most of the air for that intake comes in as well as on the back here it's got a fan filter that'll get most of your air and to clean it all you'd really have to do is just blow air this way and it and then your dust will kind of come out this uh, slot so once again to put that front cover back on all you do is set it and line it up in there push in the two spots and it clicks right on oh my gosh this is such a tall case too so I guess I'm gonna have to go handheld for a second to look at the top of this case because this tripod only goes so tall and I hope I've got enough battery to do this because I've got it plugged in but I'm even gonna have to stand on a chair to get a nice good angle <laughs> but up on top here We've got your power button. Uh, I can't tell if I'm getting good light or not. But you've got a power button. You've got your hard drive activity LED. And then over here you've got your power LED. We've got a cover on the top with these vents that are closable with the when you move this lever. So you can either have maximum airflow or maximum silence and even in this mode when it looks completely closed off there are little mesh runners along the side that allow a little bit of air to go through however if you're running something that's going to be intensive and you need good cooling you probably leave it open and once again this panel you just push here and here and it comes up revealing a space for 
three 120 or 140 millimeter fans so that you can have your radiator on the inside of the case and the fans kind of on the outside or if you wanted to you can put the fans underneath like this one that comes with it is and then you can put a slim radiator up here which I would not recommend doing but you could if you really wanted to and so you've got that option uh, we'll put this you line up those three little notches with these three little tabs and give it a nice push on the two latches and it's nice and secure so I'm gonna put you guys back on the tripod and I'll turn this case over to the side All right, I'm gonna take a seat again so I can kind of sit over here and look at the case and the camera. To get the side panel off, there's a screw up here, a screw down here that have to come completely out. And then this middle screw, you just loosen it up a little bit, pull it down. I don't know if you, how well you'd be able to see this, but you just loosen this last screw, pull it down, and it's spring-loaded, and then you just pull your panel off and leave that screw on. Your panel just kind of pulls backwards and slides right off. As you can see, we've got a nice big window. Whoops. Got a nice big window that'll let you view all of your hardware. It comes with a protector that I'm going to leave on until this system's completely done because I don't want to get it all scratched up. So we'll move our panel and I'll put that on my bed for now. And then we've got just a massive inside of this case. Um, I think we'll start at kind of the front area. Up here we've got our... Why did I turn the LCD around? Alright, up here we've got our uh, toolless drive base. You just loosen, or you push this little lock that way, and then you push here, and these two pins come out of the cage, so you may slide stuff in, and then you push it back, lock it. No, ow. I just hit my, uh, hit my arm there. But if I take you guys off the tripod again, you can see that these are here, and this one's back. Now, remember how I said about that stealth bay? It's because in these bays on the bottom here, it sits right at the front of the case. But here, it's got to sit back. So it lets the pins be further back so you can mount your optical drive with that stealth bay. However, there's a couple flaws in this case in that um, if you put a radiator up in the top, it blocks if it's a long radiator, like a 360 or 420, it'll block off this bay, and you can't use that stealth bay, which is why I'm going to mod mine so that I can use the stealth bay down here. Basically, all I have to do is drill two holes back here a little bit, and I'll do a video when I do that, but it's pretty simple. Now, we've got our two regular bays, and the back panel to your hot swap, and in order to be able to pull out that hot swap tray, you undo two thumb screws right there. And then once those two screws are out, we can go back to the front here, remove our hot swap panel, and and our drive bay slides right out and you can mount your drive in there slide it in and it'll connect to the uh, to the interface panel back here and if you want to use this as a regular optical bay you just take out those two screws and there's two on the other side as well and the interface panel will pop out and you can use it as a regular optical drive moving downwards we've got our six option six hard drive bays um, these are removable. Here, uh, I think I'll put this back in the tripod right now. We've 
we've got your six hard drive slots. Each one of these cages holds three hard drives, and they're each each cage is removable. So I'm just gonna remove the bottom cage for now because the top one's got a fan on it that I have to unhook if I want to take that top one out. So I'm just going to remove the bottom cage. You undo the screws holding it in. Grab on your little handles. All right, yeah, it's in camera. Grab your handles and you just pull it out. And then you've got your empty space. Now, if you want to put a radiator on the bottom, you take out these two screws and there's two on the other side and this uh, the rail system will come out and you can easily mount your radiator. That's what I'll be doing. I'm going to do a video about my own system that I'm going to be building in this. I'll do a video about that uh, probably like in a day or two. But for now, this is strictly an overview, so I'll kind of keep that out of it. <sighs> All right. If we move over into the, uh, the motherboard area, you see that you've got a massive motherboard spot. It supports pretty much every format of motherboard that's out there. It's got grommets everywhere for all different sizes of motherboards and power supplies and everything. And if, even if you're mounting like a 60 mil radiator in the top with push-pull fans, it'll fit, like it'll barely fit, but it'll fit with the motherboard in there still. So this is just quite an amazing case. It's got a lot of space for a lot of stuff. And as I showed earlier, there's this top fan, there's the there's a uh, 140 on the rear, and there was a 140 on this top hard drive cage. It comes with four fan stock. We'll go over the connectors on the, the, the case connectors. We've got our USB 3.0 motherboard header. We've got the USB 3.0 motherboard header for those two USB 3 ports. We've got our... USB 2.0 header for our two USB 2.0 front ports. We've got another USB header, and that's for the card reader. We've got a SATA power connector, and that that's for that uh, LED button that I showed you. Once again, we'll get to that when we get to the back of the case. We've got our front panel audio connector, and we've got our front buttons and LEDs. Um, on the bottom here, you've got room to, whoa, you got room to mount a huge power supply and there's plenty of grommets to put your cables through no matter how long the power supply is and you can still fit a radiator in here. Now some people say that if you put like a 240 radiator in the bottom, about the max power supply you should get is 180. The power supply I'm going to use is 200 millimeters, so um, we'll see how that fits. Personally, I measured it out, and it, it looks like it should fit fine, but we'll see when that happens. Alright, I think we're going to move to the other side, and then we'll go over the back at the end. So I'm going to back up the camera. And as you can see, I've got a towel on my desk so I don't scratch the desk and so I can move this case a little easier. Now, the uh, this side panel is just blank because this is where you hide your cables. And once again on the back here, you take off your top thumb screw, take off the bottom thumb screw, and just loosen this one and push it down and your side panel pops out and we've got all of our cable management area I haven't touched this back here this is how you get it from the factory we've got our we've got all of your front panel headers running through this hole you can run them wherever they need to be for your motherboard later they're, um, they use a cable tie, which I would prefer a twist tie, but, you know, they're just trying to keep the cables kind of bunched up for now, so you can, you can always cut that, uh, cable tie if you want to. You get a, 
a fan power distributor basically. I don't even want to call it a controller because as you can see it's just got a Molex in and seven fan headers out. It does not support any sort of controlling, it's just always on. If your computer's on, your fans are on. But it, it is attached with a Velcro pad, which is how I took it off there. But it is attached with Velcro if you want to move it or take it off completely. I might have a use for that in my build, I'm not sure. But if we zoom out... Man, I am so bad at remembering which way is which for this, uh, for the zoom. But down here we've got our six hard drive bays, and to remove your hard drive, all you would do is you press on the tabs a little bit, and you pull it out. And I conveniently have one of my hard drives from an old system over here. And to install a hard drive, all you got to do. Alright, I don't know quite how to get this on video, but all you do is there's four little pins on the thing, and you, you align it with the four pins of the hard drive, and this is probably something best not done on camera. But... You get the idea. You mount the hard drive on there and you push those four pins in. And then you slide your hard drive. Okay, well. I fail at getting these in there properly. But other than that, if done properly, you just slide your hard drive in, slide your hard drive out, and you know it's pretty easy to swap them out. So I guess I'll leave that in there for now. Also, there's a screw pack that comes with this case that allows you to use, there's four little screw holes that allow for 2.5 inch drive mounting, whether you be using an, an SSD or just for some reason a laptop hard drive. And I don't have any SSDs, so I'm showing a laptop hard drive. But you would, uh, well first you have to take out, take out these grommets, but after that you just line up your four screw holes on the back here and you put in your four screws and you mount it the same way. There's lots of room back here for cable management. Um, uh, that should be quite obvious. I didn't I don't really need to say that I don't think. But I will anyways because that's how I am. We're gonna zoom out a little more. And now we're gonna get to pretty much the end of this. Which thank God because this is a 20 minute video already. So on the back here, we've got a lot of space before you get to your motherboard um, I.O. shield because of that radiator spacing and everything. On the back here, you can mount either a 120 or a 140 fan, and you can mount it up here, down here, in the middle. It, it, it all depends on if you're mounting a radiator or not. You've got your I.O. panel. You've got um, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's I think it's a nine. Uh, nine PCI slots, so you can run a full-sized or an extended ATX board, have four graphics cards, and still have one space left over. We've got four water cooling grommets, but please, 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 if you buy this case, don't don't use those, because this case has so much internal water cooling ability that you really should not need to use that. And on the bottom, we've got our power supply mount. Nothing big there. Now, what I what I've been kind of saying about. This isn't that big of a deal, but it's almost sad that nobody's thought of it before and ZXT did. That button on the front controls this LED right here. There's a little LED, and there's a little LED right in here. So what that does is when you're sitting here, you're trying to get into the back of your computer, trying to plug something in, you press that, that button, and it turns on those lights, and it gives you a little bit more light on the back of your case. Now, I've just plugged in a power supply from an old computer in this, and they're not that bright, but they're still useful. So personally, I'm going to run a Bits Power uh, LED strip along here or something if I need it. But it's going to be just fine for most people if you you know if you just need to plug in a cable or something, it'll light it up just fine. 
Now one thing that I kind of wanted to show that I forgot is uh, we're going to flip this around once again. And I'm going to show that stealth mounted bay. So how this front bay works. So how this front stealth bay works is after you take off your panel of course and you loosen that up and you uh, make it so you can install a drive in. You just slide in your optical bay. And you line it up and you lock it in there. And now I'm going to turn it so you can see the front of the case. And you can kind of see how it's not mounted flush with the front of the case. And that's where this drive cover comes in. You put that on there and it doesn't fit perfect for this drive, but that's okay because this isn't how I'm going to be setting it up anyways. But if it fit perfect and it kind of does, like the button will still press, but you got to push it a little bit harder than I'd like. But you push that button, it transfers it onto the optical drive's thing, onto the optical drive button, and it will, well, since there's no power to it, I've got it simulated, but, and then that'll open the, uh, open the optical drive cover, which will just let this little spring operated uh, cover will just pop open. And once it closes up, it'll just close right back up and it's all stealth mounted again. And another quick thing, like I said, when you remove those screws, you've got your hot swap bay that does support either 3.5 or 2.5 inch drives with the, uh, once again, the screws that are included that I just left in the package because I don't need them right now and I don't want to lose them. And since I already put my 3.5 inch drive in the, uh, in the actual drive slot, you, you can mount a 3.5 or 2.5 in there. And once it's all screwed on, you just slide it in and it'll clip into the thing and you've got your hot swappable drive. And then you leave that in there with the drive in it and then uh, you put this cover back on and it lets some airflow through to keep it from not melting. And yeah. So overall guys, I'm going to say that this is a fantastic case with more features than you could ever even wish for. So overall, I think if you're looking at buying this case, don't even hesitate. I recommend you buy it. If you if it's if it's one of the cases you're considering and you need water cooling, definitely go for it. So this has been a surprisingly long overview of this case. Hope you um, saw the features that you're looking for, and th thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and leave a comment. If you want to see more of my videos, including me going over what's going to go in this case, me actually building it, and just all the other videos I do, please click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next videos.